Washington, D.C. has strict rent control laws, but some landlords have decided they're going to completely ignore those laws and operate their businesses as they see fit. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing in Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's coming out of Washington, D.C. And as I've mentioned many times before, Washington, D.C. has very strict rent control laws. They also have a lot of very anti-landlord, anti-property rights laws like the tenant opportunity to purchase stuff. And, you know, they're always paying for lawyers, free lawyers for tenants to fight their eviction cases. And it's a very rough place to be a landlord. But the problem is that some landlords, they're just not paying attention to these laws. Now, I always suggest, hey, follow the law, the jurisdiction where you're doing business, right? But some landlords have found out that, hey, there's no enforcement of these laws. There's no enforcement, so therefore I'm going to do whatever I want to do, including completely ignoring rent control. And if they you know, f figured out that that's the way that they can operate and that's what they have to do to, you know, to survive their business to survive, then that's exactly what they're going to do. So, you know, when you, when I talk about, hey, you're going to create a market, a black market of, you know, illegal rentals and you're going to, you know, an un under the table transactions, et cetera, right? You're not going to actually make things better. You're not actually going to make housing more affordable for those who need it. Instead, things are going to be done in a little bit more shady way. And that's not what we want to see. What we want to see is that there's plenty of, you know, um, market rate, landlords are able to charge market rates because, you know, that that is what is allowed by law. And tenants, they have affordable housing because the cities and the governments don't hold them back from building new housing. OK, they don't make it so expensive and so hard to build new housing that housing is unaffordable. That is the true cause of, of the lack of affordability. So before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like, subscribe button, maybe leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. So if you are a landlord in a place like if you were, you know, we're talking theoretical here. If you were a landlord in a place like D.C. or New York or um, Seattle or in California that has rent control laws, would you try to find a way around those laws? You know, would you, um, you know, do under the table deals? Would you, you know, I, remember, this is all theoretical. I'm not talking about any, anybody breaking the law for real. I just am curious what you would do in a situation like that. I personally wouldn't break the law. I just wouldn't invest there. But anyway, let's get into this article and see what it says. This article is coming from WashingtonCityPaper.com, and it says, How Some Landlords Skirt D.C.'s Rent Control Law. Weak government oversight allows property owners to evade rent control and unlawfully raise rents on working-class Washingtonians. All right, well, let's get into it. In October 2016, Robert Enzel was in the process of buying the rent-controlled Adams Morgan apartment building where I live. He emailed real estate broker Marty Zupansic asking for some advice. I had requested to move to a different unit in the same building, and Enzel wanted to know how much he could increase the rent if I left my apartment. If we agreed to the move, what can we advertise her apartment for? The $1,360 she pays or the $3,000 market rent, Enzel asked in an email provided to me. Zupansic appears to advise Enzel that he could essentially ignore D.C.'s rent control law because the Department of Housing and Community Development, which is in charge of administering the law, wouldn't bother to check. So yeah, unless my, my uh, view, I believe, is unless there is a complaint, then they're not actually going to check and see what the rents are. So you could charge whatever rent you want, at least that's what they're saying here in this article, okay? They, they could charge, these landlords could charge whatever rent they want as long as there's no complaints. But let me continue. <clears throat> you can do whatever you want, weighing the risk versus reward, and also depending on if you go or if you do the work to the unit, et cetera, Zupansic replied. By right law, you can add 10% immediately to her $1,360 or 1496 in reality, unless your new tenant complains to um, DHCD, not likely that a tenant at $3,000 will care one way or another. It's between you and your tenant. We could talk about strategies that other investors implement all the time. 
So to me, you know, I'm reading this, the, the, the way that I'm, you know, understanding this is that just by the tenant moving out and the unit becoming vacant, you're automatically allowed to increase rents by 10%. But the market rate is so much higher than that. It's more than double the amount that they are charging for rent in this unit, right? So you would think a new property owner comes in there and they're like, hey, you know, I need to make a return on the money that I invested and I need to be able to raise the rents up to the market rate. Otherwise, you know, this is a losing investment, okay? So they're going to do anything they possibly can, including take a risk that, hey, we're going to raise this rent and then this uh, tenant board or whatever who's in charge of rent control could find out and then, you know, we get in trouble for it. But they don't seem to be too worried about it because, you know, even in smaller cities, there's tens of thousands of units and, you know, thousands upon thousands of properties. And it's just very hard for city government to keep up with anything without you know, being able to track complaints. So the, the easiest way to track a complaint would be if you had a current tenant inside one of your units and then you rose the rent above whatever uh, maximum threshold, right? But it's much harder to track when a tenant moves out, how much you raise that, unit, that empty unit, how much you raise the rent there. That's why a lot of these cities now are asking to say, oh, we want a 100% rental registration. Every single unit you own has to be registered. The, the rent amounts that uh, you charge have to be registered, et cetera, right? And that would be a nightmare for landlords because you know they, it, could be, it could mean clawbacks, basically where landlords have to pay out thousands of dollars, you know, but I don't even know who the money would go to, honestly, right? If the tenant thinks they're getting a good deal, what does it matter what, whether it's market rate or if it's a rent control rate? You know, you're not cheating the tenant on anything. If, if a new tenant comes up there and says, I'll pay three grand a month, that same tenant isn't going to be like, oh, well, it isn't fair, fair that I had to pay $1,500 more than, no, no, you agreed to that amount. You know, like, this whole government manipulation of prices is it's 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 horrible it's a horrible thing and it creates a bunch of entitled selfish greedy tenants okay and that's that's who's writing this article you know this person writing this article is complaining because they they have a great rent control deal but then the landlord might have been able to charge the next tenant more ooh ooh that's so awful so awful listen Worry about yourself. Don't worry about that next tenant. Worry, worry about yourself. Zapancic's response is half right. The law allows landlords to raise the rent by up to 10% in vacated units, but his advice that you can do whatever you want provides a window into the role that real estate agents and investors can play in evading D.C.'s rent control law, due in part to a lack of enforcement from the DHCD's Rental Accommodations Division. And no, he's actually 100% right. The landlord can do whatever they want, legal or illegal. Okay, he's not half right. The landlord can and will do whatever they want. Now, you know, the, <laughs> I don't believe that the real estate agent was in the wrong at all, saying that, hey, a lot of landlords do this. I'm just pointing out facts. <laughs> I am pointing out facts. You know, if you want to go out and uh, break into somebody's house and steal their TV, that's a crime. But you can do whatever you want. You really can, okay? But within the law, the law says that you have to follow these certain rules, right? And that, that's what the, uh, the person writing this article doesn't seem to understand, that sometimes the risk to reward is, hey, I'm going to take the risk because the reward is that great and the risk is that small. And that's why a lot of landlords end up you know, just breaking the law and doing what they want to do. So I'm going to skip down and it says here, um, you know, he goes more into his story and it says, I ultimately remained in my unit and my rent didn't increase, but my new neighbors were not so fortunate. I discovered years later that Enzel and his partners through their 2523-13 LLC raised the rents in the other units by about 60% over the past five years. And so, you know, basically this guy, you know, this guy is an attorney, you know, and he's going after this landlord for raising the rents, I guess, above the amount that the city of D.C. allows. Right. 
And, you know, to me, it just, it, it seems like, you know, I, I just don't understand rent control. I just don't. Okay. I don't understand the, the motivation behind it. You know, like to me, it's, it's like this, you do, you're just trying to stick it to them. Hey, Oh, you, you know, it's a bunch of people who seem jealous that somebody else has more money than them or that somebody else got a better deal than them or whatever. Right. And that, that's what the, the case of this, this is, right? He's got a great deal. He lives in a rent control unit and he's like, oh, but my neighbors didn't get as good a deal as me. Well, so what? They agreed to it. They were willing to pay however much the rent that was being charged was, and they didn't complain. And that well, it wasn't good enough for you though. No, you know, money grubbing lawyers. Okay. The, 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 the person who wrote this article is a lawyer. He says, as an attorney with experience in consumer protection, this revelation had me wondering whether my landlord is an example of a larger trend. After almost two years of research, including discussions with hundreds of tenants in BC, it appears that my landlord's behavior is not uncommon. Of course it's not uncommon. What do, what do they think is going to happen in a place with rent control? Of course there's going to be landlords trying to work around the rent control system, trying to you know get actually be able to turn a profit. Of course, okay? We're putting hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars into these investments and they don't think we should be able to make a profit. They don't think we're going to do everything possible to make a profit. Of course we are. Stop being ignorant. Okay. Grow up. This is the real world. Once you get out of Washington, DC, out of your little bubble, guess what? You have to pay market rates. You have to pay market rates, whatever the market dictates. You don't get to just live wherever you want to live for super cheap forever on the backs of somebody else who's subsidizing your living. You're a lawyer. Why don't you pay your own rent? You can afford it. <laughs> Come on. Give me a break. But you know what? You can drive your city into the ground. I don't care. You can drive D.C. into the ground. My suggestion for anyone who well, wants to buy a real estate, don't buy it in D.C. Don't buy it in any place with rent control. Go buy where... You are treated the best where you have your property rights and let these, you know, large cities, let them just fall down and run, be run down into the ground.